Hello there. It's Ken, and we're on the third video for Pride Month talking about relationships, love, sexuality, all that fun stuff, all that stuff that we are supposed to talk about in June um, as part of Pride Month because, uh, I don't know. Yes. Lawn mowers. I have no pride of lawn mowers. Not when I'm shooting videos anyway. I mean, the lawn's gotta get mowed. I understand that, but uh, I guess when I'm shooting videos, I'm very discriminatory against lawn mowers and weed whackers and leaf blowers. I don't like them, said Sam I am. I do not like long care services while shooting videos and stuff. Um, anyway, and barking dogs. Man, this neighborhood's just getting louder and louder and louder. I'm starting to think nobody likes me here anymore. Um, either that or I'm just getting up too late in the day. Oh, what a feisty little, what a feisty little dog. Anyway, so we're talking about discrimination, uh, romantic discrimination. Um, this is different than, say, gender discrimination, which is something that would happen in, say, like a work workforce type situation, or um, uh, sexual discrimination, which is something that happens um, in the in the womb during um, the development of the fetus that's sexual discrimination where it uh, the hormones decide whether the the fetus will be male or female or something in between no we're talking about romantic discrimination and romantic discrimination um, I think the most famous example is there's this uh, uh, a meme of, of uh, a clip of a conversation on OK Cupid, I believe it is, and the um, the girl says uh, to the guy, "How tall are you?" and um, and so uh, the guy says, why? Well, why is that important, how tall I am? And the girl says, well, because I only date tall men. And to which the guy replies, I'm 6'4". How much do you weigh? <laughs> and she says, well, why does how much I weigh matter? And he says, because I only date skinny girls. Um, to which, of course, she then yells at him uh, for discriminating against her, um, which he is, but she's also discriminating against him, and she can't see that, and that's the irony of the situation. Um, which is why it's funny, which is why it's a joke, which is why everybody knows it. Um, so, that leads to the question, is discrimination right or wrong or neither? Uh, dogs, 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 dogs. I'm going to go somewhere else. So, is it right or wrong or neither? Um, is it indifferent? Well, I don't know. That's the question we're asking. I don't really have an answer. I, you know, I, I don't know everything. Um, so well, let's look at like if somebody's homosexual, right? Then they only are attracted to people of their own genders, right? So they're discriminating romantically against people of the opposite gender. Now it might not be a matter of you know 
I was just raised that way kind of stuff. That's one type of discrimination. But also, I was just born that way. Well, that's another. That's another type of discrimination. And regardless of whether the root um, of the discrimination being biological or sociological, um, to me, seems rather indifferent. Um, you know, because um, in the end, it's the action is the same. That's I'm a, I'm a I'm a man of action. So if the action is the same. Uh, I'm I'm less worried about the root cause of the action unless we're trying to change the action in which case change the motivation for that action so like for example if um, somebody doesn't serve black people in their restaurant you know um, that would be behavior you'd want to change so you'd want to find out why you know um, why that they, they 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 they've taken the motivation to choose that that path of discrimination and maybe you find out that you know yeah you just their parents were awful people and filled their head full of lies saying oh black people will steal all the french fries off of the white customers plates or something like that something stupid and then you can educate them and change their mind and they'll see the light and say oh yeah, I'm dumb. I should totally have been serving black people all the time. They're really great customers. They order lots of food and they're always friendly or whatever, you know. I don't know. I'm just making shit up. But like, but like, see, that would be a behavior modification. So then what we have is, uh, you know, but because you really should we be applying this to, to romantic situations. So all of a sudden it takes on a whole new meaning because... You have like this crap like conversion therapy, right? Which is, I don't know, uh, it seems bizarre to me to a certain point. Um, I, I won't go as far to say as it's wrong because to me it seems almost like some other, like a completely its own form of kink, you know? <laughs> like for real like so if if uh you know if we're gonna say that everybody has a right to their sexuality right um as a reverend of the universal life church we believe that all of god's creatures have a right to their sexuality for reals that's that's not it's not a joke a lie and that's universal life church look us up um but uh so you know, these kind of conversion therapists, um, if you look at what they're doing um, and you say, compare that to a, um, a, a dominatrix style um, uh, relationship or a dominant submissive relationship thing, I mean, <laughs> right, you know? Um, <laughs> I mean, really, like, like, I, I, you know, take the, take the, the nameplate off the office door and, and really what's going on in there, um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so, I mean, as long as all the, you know, again, look at my last video, um, about fantasy and reality, and we talk about consent, consent is really... The key issue here. Um, so, if somebody, you know, if somebody was court ordered to go to conversion therapy, um, that would obviously be wrong, um, for sure. Um, in the case of 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 children and their parents, so that's a lot of what happens. A lot of times, parents will enroll their child and conversion therapy not just for sexual matters for all sources they have Christians have a lot of conversion therapies for 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 renegification re centers as I also also like to call them um, 
you know. But uh, I've had friends who are into like, you know, Satanism and witchcraft and paganism, and their Christian parents didn't like that, so they enroll them in these conversion therapy things and uh, for that. But we're talking, we're focusing on matters of the heart today. So, uh, but if somebody's an adult, and they're like, man. You know, my life would be a lot better if I wasn't gay. And then they go to the conversion therapy on their own volition. Well, crap. I mean, who? I mean, who the hell am I to say that that's that's right or wrong? You know, like they want to do it and let them do it. You know, maybe that's maybe they get off on trying to not be gay. Who knows? Maybe. The people in the conversion therapy that run the conversion therapy office, maybe, you know, they get off on on getting people to go against their their sexual nature. I mean, there's all sorts of weird shit out there, man. You know, like like yeah. But anyway, so that's just more kind of the political side of it. I want to focus more on the day to day. So um, and of course, got to talk about me because it's pride. I have to talk about myself and my my stuff. Um, so I've got a number of discriminatory things that I do romantically. Um, oh, actually, before I go into that, let me talk about the opposite. And the opposite is non-discriminatory, right? So the slut, right? The quotes, the slut. Um, like, uh, I used to be very non-discriminatory, um, you know, when I was younger, um, you wanted to go, we went, like, that was kind of the deal, um, I was, you know, so major C-list performer, you know, um, of the stage, and performing almost every night. Lots of beautiful girls in the audience. Usually one would come up and say hi. And we'd go. That was pretty much how it worked. And sometimes it wasn't somebody in the audience. Sometimes it was another performer. Um, you know? And we'd, we'd, we'd get our, our groove on. Um, you know? But as, as I said, I was younger. When you're younger, that's a lot easier because you're not really thinking about or concerned with consequences to your actions um, and which I think is when you take the kind of the, the ultimate level of non-discriminatory not talking about myself here now bringing it back out to the larger picture um, the the largest range of uh, 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 I think viewed by our society um, is the the bisexual so you hear about the, the you know what is it the, the I forget the term the bisexual unicorn or whatever it's like the people say bisexuals can't be trusted this is the thing people say um, it's not true of course um, but it's just it's a social stereotype uh, archive archival kind of thought um, that bisexual people, they're indecisive, they can't decide, they can't choose, they can't pick, you know, they'll never be happy, they'll, um, uh, they'll always be, um, wanting something more than what you are, um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I can't tell you, I'm not bisexual, I don't know how that works exactly, um, my, one of my friends, well, I almost said his name, but I'm not, I'm not here to mention names. Um, one of my friends, he's bisexual. Or, no, he says he's not bisexual. He's like, I'm not bisexual. I'm greedy, is what he says. I'm greedy. You probably already know. If you know him, you probably know who I'm talking about, right? He just wants it all. He wants it all, you know. And I have other friends who are bisexual, and they're like, yeah, you know, I'm bisexual, and when... Uh, you know, but, but when I meet somebody, I like them, I'm a monogamous, you know, uh, you know, and then I know other ones are like, yeah, you know, I've got my main partner, but then when I want my other thing, I, 
you know, go out and do my thing. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not going to make any judgments on that. I, it's, you know, I'm, it's far worse things in life than, than that. I mean, shit, if I'm going to not be too judgmental on the conversion therapy guys, I can't really be be barreling down on the bisexuals now can I that would that would not be cool but back to me um, so um, like I said when I was younger very very non discriminatory now as I've gotten older and I've seen that the trouble one can get into in being uh, non non discriminatory uh, in one's sexuality um, you know uh, I've I, I've had to discriminate more, um, or I shouldn't say sexuality, in partners, in partner choices. Yes, because my sexuality is just what it is, it's just what, you know, what it is. But my partner choices, that's the, that's the choice that is made, you know. I don't necessarily have to put my, my dick in everything I'm attracted to, you know. Um, that's being an adult um, so um, but on the other hand there's also things I'm not attracted to just naturally and therefore um, you know uh, uh, that's also still discrimination but it's, it's non-choice discrimination so I guess we could take romantic discrimination into two categories there's the choice discrimination and non choice discrimination so if somebody is uh, a, a homosexual right then they would have a non-choice discrimination preference towards people of the same sex but that doesn't mean that they can't in turn as in the case of the person who's volunteering for conversion therapy they can't make a choice discrimination to, um, to, to, to sleep with only people of the opposite sex, even though internally they're gay, they can choose to act not gay. They still be gay, that's just, they're choosing not to, so they're making a romantic discrimination by choice, all right? And, and ideally, of course, one would imagine, um, although we'd have to do proper research to, to find out the answer, um, but uh, the idea of, uh, um, you know, which is, which causes the greatest happiness, you know, is it the best form of happiness to align your choices with what's natural, um, or um, to do what's most beneficial? Um, or healthy, as they might say. And what does that even mean? You know, I don't know. But uh, I mean, we're talking, we're talking years of research to uncover that mystery. Um, but long story short, I have. So let's talk about some of my my uh, choice discriminations first. That's easy, right? Cerebral, mental, choosing things because they're either beneficial or to avoid non-beneficial situations. So, um, was the circus, circus folks, let's start there. Um, circus girls, there's lots of girls in the circus. All of them are very, very beautiful. Um, that's kind of the, that's kind of part of their, their job is to go up on stage and be beautiful entertainers and regardless of whatever you think your your ideal beauty is they're out there to project beauty all right and they do it they do it very very well and um, so it's very very easy to to get a heartthrob going um, for for another fellow circus performer but I don't date them, not anymore. No, no, I don't sleep with them. No one night stands. No, no nothing. Um, 
because it makes for awkwardness if for some reason it doesn't blossom into the perfect relationship which is very very rare that any kind of romantic encounter is going to lead to you uh, getting married and having lots of babies and living happily ever after which uh, yeah sorry I'm a breeder ultimately in the end that's going to be be my goal I'm not in any hurry but um, but someday yeah yeah that's that's where that's where I'm heading with my shit um, and so uh, um, if I get with with one of these beautiful circus women and then it doesn't work out which most likely it's not um, then it makes it really weird when you have to do shows with them um, <laughs> and for a, a number of reasons and you know um, also circus is a family uh, that's how I view it uh, that's how a lot of people in the circus view it is we're uh, a family and and yes and we we, we, we stick together and you know through thick and thin and have each other's backs and this that and the other thing and so um, therefore sleeping with other circus performers well it can make the family reunion a little awkward if you know what I'm saying um, <laughs> oh right yeah huh, that drunken night last year mm, you know uh, <laughs> so um, you know, or, you know, some people are cool too. But worst case scenario, and this is really, really what... Um, hey, boy, how you doing? What we're really trying to avoid... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I love you too. I love you too. So, um, really, really what we're trying to avoid is the worst case scenario where it's like, you know, clashing heads really didn't work out and just found out that we just really hate each other and we're we're both horrible people and um that, which i it, it rarely happens but it happens and 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 i would not want to put any of the show owners or managers in the position of having to choose between myself and another performer because we decided to bone and it went horribly um, that's not that's not something in life that I particularly would like to um, see happen at all um, and so because of that uh, I will not um, date other circus performers uh, especially if I'm doing a show with them um, if we're very much in our own separate shows maybe I might um, but not certainly not if we're working for the same people um, no doesn't happen um, so that's one one discrimination I have uh, choice discrimination another choice discrimination that I have is uh, I don't I don't date mothers uh, it's not to say that single mothers are bad people or anything like that I respect everybody's choices in life but but um, having been in the other side of the situation uh, being uh, in the father position and having to deal know what it's like and, and my friends as well I have other friends who are fathers in this situation where um, you're dealing with the separation which is already hard and then you're throwing these other 
guys into the mix who are not the fathers, who are interested in the mother, and then these guys may be coming in and out of this kid's life. Um, I don't want to be that guy coming in and out of these kids' life, nor do I necessarily um, have the desire to raise somebody else's children. Uh, if things do work out with the mother and we want to get together longer term, um, you know, there's a whole other thing to think about is like, do you want to be this constant member of these children's lives and this, that, and the other thing? And, you know, and then how, then you have to have a relationship with the father and blah, blah, blah. I think one exception might be um, if the father was dead. If the children, if, if she was a widow, not separated, but the father is like in the ground, turning into bones, six feet under. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Six feet under. Then obviously, that takes a whole lot of that other stuff out of the equation. And obviously, the children would need a father figure in their life. And so, in that case, I could see maybe, I would say maybe, um, but, you know, what, I, what I, I tell people is that when you date a mother, you're not just dating the mother, you're also, uh, you're, you're forming, a, you have to form a relationship with the children at some point if you're not just boning her and not going to go anywhere with it. Um, and so, and me, I'm not really in the point in my life where I want to be in relationships that aren't going to go anywhere. I want relationships that are going to lead to something more, as I said earlier. So, um, so therefore, um, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Um, so that's a choice discrimination on my end, and I don't want to cause any further friction for the father who is trying to have his own relationship with these children so so yeah so there's that um, trying to think if that's really it on the choice discrimination okay yeah, yeah I think that's about it yeah now of course I have preferences I have romantic preferences now this isn't to say that these aren't necessarily all deal breakers, but you know, um, well, one for sure is that, uh, you know, I like women. If you haven't figured that out yet, um, from, from the previous three videos, um, I like women. So, uh, not really into dudes, um, you know, um, but, uh, hey, who knows? Maybe there's some amazing guy out there I just haven't met yet. That's what the, all the gay guys keep telling me. So, Hey, it's a possibility. I'm not going to say it's 100% impossible, but but for the most part, like I said, I'm a breeder. I like women. I like the way they look, I like the way they smell, I like the way they walk, I like the way they talk. Um, so, yeah, so there's that. That's kind of a non-choice discrimination. Um, and um, I... The, the, yeah, and these rests are very much, they're, they're preferences, they're strong leanings, so, um, I, am not into, um, women who are overweight, um, and, and when I say overweight, I mean over what would be healthy weight for them, um, I, there's some very, very attractive curvy, chubby women out there. Um, but that's the, really the key. You have to be healthy. You have to, um, you have to be, com they have to be comfortable with how they are and who they are. Um, example at the club the other night, very, very big girl. I mean, like, like if I, if there was another me and we could stand shoulder to shoulder together, We'd be as wide as this girl. Um, 
but she was out on the floor she was dancing she was kicking ass she was having a good time um you know her clothes fit her properly um that's really important actually one thing with me is that your your clothes fit on you well <laughs> i don't know where that came from but it's it's a thing it's a thing with me um you know sometimes i i would tell my friends sometimes you don't date the the girl you date the outfit um so uh so yes stylish uh and your style can be pretty much anything i don't care if you're goth or uh what they call it cheek or whatever your your thing is um just you have to wear it well it has to you have to fit into your clothes um that's that's very important um so there's that um, height i have this thing about height not particularly into girls who are taller than me um but again this is a, a preference thing this is a preference thing so i have dated um i dated a girl who was six foot seven and i dated another one who was six eleven all right this is from very very tall women i am five seven um uh, <laughs> it was really funny i looked like a child next to these women um and uh they were they were very very lovely women and they you know they're friendly and got along and we're bedroom compatible for at least a little bit you know um but i tend towards shorter women in fact if you're you're five foot and under i mean you basically got me wrapped around your finger like i'm i'm powerless against against a, a, a tiny tiny little girl uh, they, they fucking drive me crazy um I'm, it's just a thing you know um and uh i guess you know um just like that that going back to the beginning that girl in the in the okay cupid post who only likes tall guys is she a bad person for that no Maybe the way she went about saying it was a little on the rude side, um, but she's a woman who knows what she likes. Um, I am the same way. I'm a man who knows what I like, but that doesn't mean if you're uh, a wonderful person who has other traits that are exceptional um, that you can't sway me. Um, you know, there's there's what I'm attracted to, but if you have another quality that's, I guess we'll call it hyper attractive. So, you know, they talk about the girl having a really good personality. Well, you know what? I know some girls with some really good personalities that I might not be 100% attracted to them physically, but their personality is so great that... Um, and that I enjoy spending time with them, um, that I will totally get in their pants if they want me to. Um, again, consent. Consent is key. Um, so, yeah. 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 Um, I, think, I think that's it. This is about it. So, but then again, say, Again, when I talk about this height thing, I mean, if a girl is like a fucking couple inches taller than me, I'm not even gonna be thinking about you know. If you're in the general head zone area, you're pretty much okay to go. You know, if I gotta bust out the step ladder, eh, you know, maybe, maybe it might not work. But here's a little t tip. I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. If you're having issues with this, everybody is the same height when they're lying down it's really a really weird thing you know like a lot of it's uh, a lot of it's in the legs um i have not yet to meet uh the girl who i could not um both both put it in 
and make out with her at the same time. Um, and no problems in that department with girls of all shapes and sizes, um, which ultimately is something you'll want to do. It's good fun. I recommend putting it in and making it out at the same time. Uh, it's, it's, a, uh, yeah, it's a fun activity. Um, but, uh, oh yes, yeah, so, so we started off with first video in love and now we're moving more towards sex. So these videos are going to get a, start getting a lot raunchier, uh, heads up if you're watching the series. Um, if you're, if you're, uh, <laughs> if you're wearing a psychological chastity belt, you, this may, you may want to make this the last video for you. Um, but if you want to unshackle that belt, please continue go further um so let's see i think that's i think that's really about it uh, yeah that's uh, yeah i think i covered all the bases um if you think i missed something uh in terms of romantic um discrimination please feel free to leave a comment below about something i missed in my discussion that i should have talked about so thank you very much this is ken and this is Pride Month video number three, sexual, or not sexual, romantic discrimination. Cheers. Happy Pride Month. Be proud of who you are.